no more touch bar, the return of MagSafe, and the end, the end of Donga life. That's right. According to supply chain exfiltrator extraordinaire Guo Mingqi, Apple might just be getting ready to fix everything. Everything about the current era of MacBooks Pro that made so many pros just so beyond salty for so long. Here's what he said. Sponsored by Skillshare. Real quick, YouTube says only a small percentage of you watching this channel are actually subscribed. So if you like my videos, hit that button and we can make this community even bigger and better. Okay, first up, two new models equipped with 14 inch and 16 inch displays. And that really just makes the kind of sense that does, given the 15 inch already went to 16 inches at the end of 2019, and the 13 inch has just been crying out, screaming in its heart for a similar bezel busting makeover. Now, Guo doesn't seem to say anything about either of those displays going mini LED, which is something he's previously rumored a lot, like a lot, a lot. So is this an iterative rumor report or an alterative? Let me know what you think. Next, the new models cancel the curvy design on the top and bottom and adopt a flat edge similar to the iPhone 12. So the current models already have the side parts, the flat edges, the round rects, that part of the design, which makes it sound mostly like Apple's just gonna flatten the currently curvy bottom, pancake it. But does that mean Apple will literally slice it off like with a Beskar spear or something, or will they keep some or all of the thickness and make it just uniform? I'm guessing it'll depend on how much space and efficiency savings they manage to get from no longer having Intel inside. Because Apple is always, always gonna take the opportunity to go thinner and lighter if they can. The MagSafe charging connector restored. But does this mean the previous MagSafe, which was MagSafe 2, or does it mean some variant of the brand new MagSafe, the one that Apple just reimagined for the iPhone 12? It seems hella unlikely Apple would move the MacBook Pro to magnetic inductive charging with a big old set of coils and a puck that just needs slapping on a surface, no matter how ASMR that might feel, unless it's bi-directional and you could also charge your iPhone on it. But that still feels like patent fanfic at this time. So if not something old, then maybe something new, another version of MagSafe, this time reimagined for the modern Mac, and one that's even better than the old. Because right now, USB-C charging may not be MagSafe, but it does work from ports on either side, and that comes in super handy, extra convenient, and losing that would be probably as big of a pain as losing MagSafe was to begin with. The OLED touch bar is removed, and the physical function buttons are restored. Now, I know some people really like the touch bar, and I am one of them, occasionally. So we can argue about whether or not deleting it is the right best thing to do. But what is inarguable is that after introducing it in 2016 with the last big MacBook redesign, Apple has promptly, speedily improved it and expanded it, just not at all, like a number no greater than zero times. They shifted it up to reduce accidental touch events, a bit, but no taptics, no texture simulation, no desktop Mac support, no nothing. So if Apple isn't gonna prioritize it enough to get a single significant update out in five years, maybe that just means the touch bar had its chance and it's off to join the retirement home button club now in the sky. Same heat pipe based thermal system as the current 16 inch, but no, no Intel CPU option. And that'll be phenomenal for all those M1 expected cores, but also no Intel. Duh. There's probably room for only one Intel update left, if any, in Apple's roadmap, and it ain't these. They're equipped with more types of I.O., and most users may not need to purchase additional dongles. And this one legit confuses me, because Apple seems to still be in the habit of killing ports, not resurrecting them. Would Apple bring back USB-A for a pro market when they don't even ship iPhones with USB-A cables anymore? SD card sort of makes sense, some of my cameras use CF Express cards now, but all of them, all of them still take SD cards as well. So that would at least have a lot of appeal for photo and video pros. HDMI though, does that really rank high enough on Apple's MacBook dongle sales chart to qualify? Traditionally, it's appealed to people who give presentations or just love them some home theater. But if the M1 Mac mini is any indication, maybe Apple just wants an HDMI port so they can toss in support for an extra display. Coming third quarter, 2021. And yeah, that's right. According to Guo, 
at least this week, we won't see these new MacBooks Pro at the March event or even at WWDC in June. No, we'll have to wait until maybe September or October for them. And my first instinct is just to say that that sucks. That totally sucks. But if we're getting an honest to eye redesign this year and don't have to wait for a second update next year, I'll take it. I will absolutely take it, even if it only comes in the fall. And I'll just spend whatever extra time I have learning how to be a better video editor with Ali Abdal's class on Final Cut Pro, from beginner to YouTuber. And I'll pair that with Thomas Frank's new productivity class, which teaches you how to build sustainable habits without feeling like a failure, which is something I'll really, really need because going into 2021, it's starting to already feel like just the tenet of years. But that's the real power of Skillshare. It isn't just one class, even several classes. It's an online learning community that offers membership with meaning and with an annual subscription that's less than $10 a month. You can learn illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, so much more with real projects to create and the support of real fellow creatives. More than 7 million of us learning with Skillshare and the first 1,000 of you who click on the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Absolutely free. So act now and start learning today. And clicking on that link really helps out the channel. For all the latest on Apple Silicon Macs, just click the playlist above. I'll give you all the reviews, all the previews, all the analysis. Just click the playlist and I'll see you in the next video.